Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Lacklin, and I'm a surgeon here in Boston, Massachusetts. And today I'm going to give you a basic introduction to stem cells, exosomes, PRP injections, and biologics in general. It's important to understand what the various terms mean, as well as the science and biology behind them. Stem cells, exosomes, PRP injections, and similar treatments fall under the large umbrella of a treatment option called biologics. Well, what are biologics? Biologics are products that are derived from biological sources, such as living organisms, cells, tissues, and they're unlike pharmaceutical drugs, which are essentially manufactured in a lab. In orthopedic surgery, when I do a total joint replacement, metal and plastic, not a biologic. But when I transplant cartilage cells back into someone's knee, that's a biologic. There's a wide variety of biologics now, such as vaccines and medications like Humira and Embryl, which have been life-changing for people with autoimmune diseases. Another example of biologics that, that personally I find absolutely amazing is CAR T cell therapy for some cancers. Basically, they draw blood from you and from that blood harvest your own T cells. They are then reprogrammed in the lab to be T cells that will attack that specific cancer. And so that blood is, and those T cells are then reinfused back into your body. Now I've been using other biologics to treat patients for a couple of decades. When I first started doing cartilage transplants years ago, it was considered almost crazy, but over time it's become a well-accepted and proven therapy. I take a biopsy from the surface of your knee using a simple arthroscopic procedure, day surgery, and then those cartilage cells are grown and cultured in a lab, and then I'll re-implant them into your knee. This is called an autologous cartilage transplant. Well, what's autologous mean? Autologous simply means that the tissue comes from your body, from you, in contrast to something that's called allergenic, which is something donated from another person. Another example of biologics, and now we're gonna talk about PRP injections. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. We take a sample of your blood and placing it in a centrifuge, it then gets spun down and will separate into different layers. And there's a distinct thin platelet layer which contains tiny cell fragments that are rich in growth factors and proteins called cytokines. We inject this platelet layer into the injured area to promote healing. So now we know what this broad term of biologic means, let's talk about stem cells which belong to this group. To really understand stem cells, I wanna start at the beginning and talk about the first stem cells that you had in your body. Now, traditionally, for hundreds of thousands of years, and a man and a woman got together, and we're not gonna go into the details of that, but a sperm fertilized an egg. With modern medicine, however, this can also be done in a lab, which is called in vitro. The fertilized egg undergoes division and after a series of steps develops into what's called a blastocyst. Inside that blastocyst, you can see those tiny stem cells. They can be removed and harvested from the blastocyst and then those stem cells can be grown and cultured in a lab. You'll hear the term embryonic stem cells and this is what they're talking about. These stem cells are pluripotent. Another word, pluri means many, potent means the potential to form many different cell types. These stem cells are amazing. They are undifferentiated cells. These cells haven't decided yet just what type of cell they want to become. When different cells need to be formed, then these stem cells differentiate and become that specific cell type, such as a muscle cell, cardiac, nerve cells, etc. Stem cells have two essential characteristics. The first is that they can replicate and reproduce themselves through cell division, where the cell basically divides into two identical cells. And the second characteristic is that they can differentiate into specific cell types. 
Now, for many years, the classic teaching has been that this is a one-way street, meaning that when an undifferentiated stem cell does differentiate, it can't go backwards. In other words, it cannot go from being a specific cell back to being an undifferentiated stem cell. However, this thinking changed with Nobel Prize winning research performed in Japan by Dr. Yamanaka, who discovered a way to take a simple skin biopsy from a patient and then through advanced lab techniques, revert the adult skin cell back into being a stem cell, which can then be grown in the lab to produce larger number of stem cells and importantly, the products of those stem cells called exosomes. The advantage of this type of stem cell is that with this technique, you remember the word autologous, it means that it comes from the same person. These are called induced pluripotent stem cells, a very long term that is conveniently shortened to IPSC. The next place where you can get stem cells from that I wanna talk about is the umbilical cord. This is rich in stem cells that are young and pluripotent. And you can also harvest stem cells from the placenta. Both of these are donated at the time of childbirth and therefore not autologous. They come from another human being. Stem cells are also found in an adult human body. They can be harvested from areas like the bone marrow or from fat areas of that patient. These cells obviously are older and they're also further differentiated down the stem cell line and therefore they're called multipotent instead of pluripotent stem cells. Multi means that they can differentiate into multiple different cells, but don't have the same possible number of different cells that they can become when you compare them to say a pluripotential stem cell. Exosomes are closely related to stem cells and they're actually the product of stem cells that years ago they were originally thought of being garbage and they were simply released by the stem cell as a useless byproduct. However, we now understand that they're very important. In this illustration, we can see that the stem cell on the left in blue is releasing tiny exosomes. Now, in this illustration, it's greatly magnified in the illustration on the right. This size difference is very important because exosomes are much smaller than stem cells, which gives them some significant treatment advantages. Well, what's their purpose? The stem cell wants to send a message and communicate to the surrounding tissues and cells. Texting doesn't seem to work and the other cells don't have TikTok. So think of exosomes as being the federal express for communication between the stem cell and other cells. They deliver and contain messages as well as nutrients. This way, stem cells don't just differentiate into more cells, they also affect the behavior of the tissue around them via those exosomes. They influence the recipient cell's behavior, function, and even their appearance. They're involved in immune regulation, modulate the immune response, and can either activate or suppress immune cells. Exosomes are also involved in tissue repair and regeneration by delivering growth factors. These are proteins secreted and used by other cells to communicate with each other. Currently, exosomes are being used for everything from restoring hair loss to dermal injections to try and have a more youthful skin appearance. Research about exosomes is ongoing and at the very cutting edge of medicine. Everything from delivering drugs to tissue regeneration is being investigated at some of the most prominent universities in the world. I hope you now understand some of the terms being used in this field. What I'd really like you to do is be careful about some of the claims being used for their uses. This is a new field, it's in its development stage, requires a lot more research, and I believe it holds incredible promise. Preliminary results are extremely hopeful. Did you notice I used the word preliminary? We need more clinical trials with large numbers done by experienced investigators to determine not only the uses and indications, but also the risks. To be an informed patient, you really need to understand the science and evidence behind treatment. We have an expression in surgery and it's a joke, but like a lot of jokes, it has a basis in reality. We'll say that if you have a hammer and you get paid a lot of money to use it, 
an awful lot of things start to look like a nail. I believe that stem cells and exosomes are going to turn out to be one of the greatest advances in medicine, not just therapeutic medicine, but also regenerative medicine. And along the way, we need to exercise caution and judgment. Feel free to contact me with any questions you may have, and I'm always interested in talking to other experts who may know more than I do about any given topic. Life is a constant learning process, so let's share this journey together. Have a great life, a long life, and enjoy excellent health.